Hello viewers and welcome to a brand new episode of Trash Talk on Heavy Gear 4th Edition, a series where I talk about the various gears and vehicles you can pilot and drive around in the Heavy Gear universe. In this episode, I will be talking about the Peace River Gears, Part 1. Peace River, is a Badlands city-state run by Paxton Arms, a global conglomerate that made just about anything you could think of, including gears, though recently it has been reorganized into Paxton Industries because of a necessary rearrangement, essentially, it's a military industrial complex big enough to take control over almost half of the Badland belt, the other half was taken up by the new coal instead and Paxton is kinda annoyed about that. During the first CEF invasion of Terra Nova, Peace River initially maintained its neutrality, but in reality it was biding its time to build up the Peace River Defense Force, and eventually, worked alongside the Polar military to push the CEF off Terra Nova, this however, brought a large target on Peace River because fascists are always butthurt, and the old Peace River city-state got rapidly deconstructed by an antimatter bomb. All the bombing did however is causing the end of the interpolar war as both North and South and everyone else finally remember that Earth is still gunning for Terra Nova, forcing everyone to work together once again, which is an achievement because politic on Terra Nova is so polarized that the main faction on this planet is literally called North and South. This quickly created the Black Talon Special Force who are incredibly good at infiltrating just about everywhere the CEF has touched and then some, and also, the new Peace River city-state was quickly constructed, with higher manufacturing capacity than the old city and more, all its inhabitants also hate Earth more than ever, and is willing to put 200% into the war effort to get CEF off Terra Nova again, so honestly, that bombing was a huge own goal for the CEF. In fact, even with the second CEF invasion, Peace River is earning more profit than ever by selling guns to everyone that want to shoot an Earther, and yes, that's the word used in heavy gear to refer to anyone that came from Earth. It's, it's straight to the point, I guess. Before going off the priority list, let's talk about what starting with Peace River as your starting sponsor will give you. First, you can get both North and South vehicles but only as export, meaning the extra slot will be slightly decreased, reducing the customizability, this still means you have a lot of options, which you will want because besides the North and South, every other faction is going to have a much smaller list of things to choose from. There's also this part which you don't need to read yet because it's not relevant yet, and also, you can mount frag cannon in torso, leaving your hands to wield other things with, there's also no size limit mentioned, so it's perfectly possible for you to shove a heavy frag cannon into your warrior's torso and that's definitely going to ruin someone's day up close, which considering that a lot of Peace River gears love close quarter combat, that's a thing you will do often. Also, not mentioned here is that Peace River is very very rich, and to explain how rich, Let's start things off with priority level 1, which gives you the warrior and pit bull. The warrior is the most basic of Peace River's gear, their hunter, or Jaeger basically, and for the most part, things are very similar, besides lacking some on-hand explosive like frag grenade or panzerfaust, and also the fact that this thing has a variant that comes with a laser cannon. Yes, this is exactly how rich Peace River is, that they can give even their most basic gear a laser goddamn cannon, they just hand them out like candies, in fact, the Crossfire Warrior is the cheapest laser cannon armed gear in Heavy Gear Blitz, and the most basic frame for the CEF, the faction that probably has energy weapon growing on tree, is still more expensive than it. The other thing about the Warrior is that you can further upgrade it with ECM Suite for e-warfare capability and armor jacket to make the Warrior even tougher and protect the pilot well, and of course, Com Suite, for Commander, you will see these kind of upgrades on Peace River gears a lot, all to give the pilot just a touch more protection than gears you could expect from the same priority level. The Pitbull is instead faster and more fragile than the Warrior, it makes up for this with good piloting stat and early warning system, while it is somewhat light on firepower, it has linked light anti-personnel grenade launcher and an integrated light machine gun, so infantry will not be a problem for this gear. It can also be upgraded for a warfare capability with actual sensor range befitting of one, or commander as usual, and also comes with a spotlight in case you want to light something up, with light, not bullets and flechettes. Onward to priority level 2, there's Jackal and Warrior 4, the Jackal is a ride for those that want to get in melee range, with high speed and decent armor, the Jackal can get in fast and cut things up with its brawler 1 trait, which can be upgraded to a 2 along with a bigger knife 2, this thing can also be deployed from an aircraft, and can be upgraded for commander, in case you want a lot of firepower too, one of its variant packs a medium rotary laser, now that's deadly. The Warrior 4 is a vastly improved version of the Warrior, think of it as the North's Tiger or the South's Sidewinder, 
the Warrior 4 is improved over the Warrior in just about every aspect, but still lacks early warning system for better dodging capability, its firepower is also not that much better than that of the Warrior, it has a bigger rocket pack, but everything else is mostly the same, though its laser cannon variant still has a rocket pack unlike the baseline Warrior. However, what's really special about the Warrior 4 is its upgrades, as it can receive stealth kit, jetpack, ECM capability with recon sensor, armor jacket, and of course, com suite for commander, and you can absolutely add all these upgrades together onto the Warrior 4, making it an extremely capable and deadly machine. Also unlike the Warrior, it can be thrown out of an aircraft, and has ram plate so it can just smash down lightly armored vehicle by going full speed. And that's not all, moving back to the Peace River starting sponsor bonus, if you start with Peace River, you can also upgrade your Warrior 4 to Warrior Elite, which increase the priority level of any variant by one, but it is well worth it because this gives the Warrior early warning system, field survival gear to last longer in the Badland, medical lab kit to fix yourself on field, plus two torso slots, and increase the E-Warfare stat to plus one if it wasn't already. To say the very least, the Warrior Elite is an incredible improvement over an already incredible machine, it's really good. At priority level three, there's the Gladiator and Stalker, the Gladiator is a speedy machine with decent protection, thanks to its 6 armor and early warning system with good piloting stat, it's also quite capable at melee with brawler 1 trait and ram plate, as well as reinforced cockpit to keep the pilot safe, and buckler on every variant to make incoming melee attack harder to be connected. Interestingly, its base variant has a pair of linked medium auto cannon, which is honestly well worth not having a rocket pack, this thing is basically dual wielding guns all the time, and if your ally got their main gun destroyed, you are effectively carrying a spare gun the whole time so you can just give them one. This thing later have a variant with heavy auto cannon down the line, but I would say just keep going with its base variant because it would be extra funny if you further modify it with other medium class firearm. This thing, as its name implied, can also be upgraded with better melee capability, though if you are using the base variant, you need to switch one of your guns out for the Viberblade to actually use it. The Stalker is a high performance machine made for Commander, it has plus one in every stat, as well as being decently fast and well protected, with early warning system too, and with satellite uplink for better connection, a commander will love this ride. You would think from its name that it's some kind of stealth unit or a warfare specialist, but no, this thing is just a strike gear that's good at everything, also has a laser cannon variant. Moving on to priority level 4, we finally get more than two things, Greyhound, Mustang, Skirmisher, and Spartan. The Greyhound is a powerful e-warfare platform, it packs advanced ECM suite, ECCM suite, and elite sensor so it can disrupt systems and communication easily even at range, and with 9 speed, it can get out of danger with ease, and even though it only has 5 armor, with early warning system and advanced ECM providing passive ranged protection, it can easily dodge incoming attack. It can also shoot just fine with its medium rifle at range, and if anything gets too close, that's what its pistol and vibroblade are for, it's also capable of being deployed rapidly with an airborne deployment rig, and it can also be upgraded for commander, which is weird because it already has an integrated satellite uplink here, this might be an error. The Mustang is what the Peace Officer Corp deploy when dealing with rovers, it's a fast tough machine with 7 armor packing medium class firearms, plus linked medium anti-personnel rocket pack and light field mortar to teach someone a painful lesson. Up close, the Mustang has Brawler 2 that lets it use its medium vibroblade well, add in ram plate and rugged terrain refit to move fast on rough terrain, and the Mustang can easily dictate which range band it desires to engage with, best of all, it's also easy to maintain and comes with extended fuel range already, good for any long range patrol. The Skirmisher is another powerful e-warfare platform for Peace River, compared to the Greyhound, the Skirmisher is slower but packs more firepower, this thing even already has comm suite installed so anyone on board could communicate back to home base with a clear channel. What Skirmisher lacks however is ECCM suite, so it's slightly less defended against hacking, but an upgrade could easily mitigate this, even adding in a target designator, and this thing could even be made stealth to increase its lethality. Finally, there's the Spartan, a supposedly affordable heavy gear made clear by the fact that this thing has zero in all its stats, but it's still kinda tough and does pack some hefty firepower like heavy auto cannon, and even has variants with light rotary laser and light particle accelerator. It carries a light chain blade too for all its variants so it can cut things up quite well, and instead of a rocket pack, it has an integrated light frag cannon, capable of shredding infantry and armor up close. The Spartan, like most Peace River gear, can also be upgraded with ECM and recon sensor, making it excellent in e-warfare too, 
Also, despite looking like a brick, this thing can be deployed out of an aircraft, presumably because when it lands at terminal velocity, it's the ground that will take damage instead of the gear. And at priority level 5, you get access to Crusader 4 and Myrmidon. Another thing that will quickly make apparent to you as you look down the Peace River list, is that they have a lot, and I mean, a lot, of massive chunky boys, the Crusader 4 is the Paxton's response to things like Grizzly and Cobra, this thing is tough and packs a lot of guns, and mounted on its shoulders and back are linked medium rocket pack and light field mortar, exactly what you would expect from a heavy fire support gear. Adding quick response system, and this thing can really respond quickly to any fire support need on field, also unlike the North and South's Grizzly and Cobra, the Crusader 4 has Brawler 1 to swing its extended reach medium vibroblade around in case anything gets too close, and reinforced cockpit makes sure the pilots stay safe even in the worst case scenario. However, while this thing is very good, it has one big problem when going up against the CEF, which is why the Crusader 5 exists, which nullifies this drawback, and also decreased the rocket pack amount for a bigger mortar tube, the Crisis Responder Crusader 5 variant is especially powerful, packing a medium particle accelerator and shield so this thing can actually fight a CEF light hover tank practically head on. Lastly, there's the Myrmidon, another heavy piece river gear that packs some serious firepower, by having a twin-linked light rotary cannon in its torso, and one of its variants also packs a heavy rotary cannon, with integrated quick response system even, so that can be a lot of DACA, good at cutting up a whole lot of basic gears or infantry, and if you need heavier punches, this thing has a medium rocket pack and can carry other heavy class firearms just fine. The Myrmidon is also tough as nail and has both medical lab kit and reinforced cockpit, so the pilot will feel safe within this machine too, other than that, it's just a big block of guns. And that's it on the Peace River list for now, on the next episode, we gonna talk on the big guns within the Peace River, anyway, that's all for now, and I will see you all next time. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe and click that notification bell button. If you want to see the videos early as well as further support my channel, you can join in my Patreon page, or buy me some Kofi, links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.